beginning of uh, 2010. Good evening, I'm Alice Norris, I'm here, and I'm a short timer. <laughs> uh, I'm a big man, and it looks like I'll be around for a while. Rocky Smith, City Commission. Yeah, U.S. City Commission. Would you please stand and join me in flight, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, let's move on to citizen comments. Can I ask a question? No, you're out of order. It's it just a quick one. I, 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 I think I think uh, I think our city manager should introduce our new uh, city attorney here. <laughs> oh, you wild Bill Hickok. Welcome back, Bill. Go <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> the next item on the agenda is something to do with ceremonies, proclamations, and presentations. Oh, there isn't one out there. Okay. Oh, sorry. They must have been taken by the urban renewal rallies, probably. That's a spell out me. I don't really have to do anything in order. Um, so I'll just expect a lot of surprises. I'll get in favor of approval of the minutes. Uh, I'm not doing the ceremony proclamation presentation. Are we swearing in a dog or anything, or what's going on? Well, I can, I'm going to make a couple of comments. Uh, some thoughts. Uh, I, I know it's at the beginning rather than the end because I, I know some people will be falling asleep out there if we waited to the end. Uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, working with Daphne West for four years and with the mayor for, for six. Um, and uh, I'd like to just make a couple of comments before I make my presentations. One, one's going to be a personal one, and one's going to be a more official one. Um, Daphne, um, I know how difficult it is to go through an election process and lose. That happened to me, too. Um, with me, it was a major difference, about 20% uh, difference between the person that defeated me and my own. And in your case, it was a case where you had three people running, they all got over 30% of the vote. And and it, it was, uh, I think, a well-fought campaign on everybody's part. But when I see close campaigns like that, I just wonder to what degree it's kind of a... Uh, it's kind of a crash here. It's you know, kind of a roll of the dice to what happens. And if if you ever if you ever decide you want to run for public office again, and you run into the same situation where you think it's going to be a close vote, I think you've got to prepare yourself for those things that appear to be a crash here. So I've given you a problem uh, here that is actually a training device for that specific Oh, dear. You have to open it now. I always want to be a distraction for a decision making for the rest of the meeting. Well, uh, those are sort of disturbing words for a logical thinker like me to think that any time I run for office, it would be a crap shoot. Aww. Thank you. And I also thought that's the same situation I think about eight years ago when you ran, and it was a very close vote for previous uh, Commissioner Holiday and yourself. That was probably one of the closest votes I've ever seen in the city. Well, was it? Okay, well, in any case, uh, uh, I should ask you again. It's always been a pleasure working with, uh, with, with, with the mayor, and um, I, I was just shocked when somebody was telling me the other day that uh, they thought Alice was a manipulator. And I look back at my history of working with her, and I, in, in terms of issues that were coming up, I don't think I ever sat individually with her 
more than only uh, maybe four or five occasions in a six-year period, talked on the phone about some issues maybe that many times. Almost uh, everything that I've been involved in with this mayor is, has really been in, in the public forum in terms of the talking about specific issues. It occurred to me that you, you recently watched the election too. And, and and maybe maybe you're not a manipulator and you should be. And if you if, if you're going to run for election, then again I I'd, I'd actually uh, give you a training advice in terms of becoming more of a manipulator. So <laughs> Uh, 22 seconds or something. Wow. Well, then you, you could get some assistance. <laughs> anyway, uh, probably a more serious adventure. Uh, I think I've got these right. Uh, presenting you a plaque that has been presented to Daphne West for your four years on the commission. Uh, thank you so much. We are going to save, or I'm going to save my remarks until the end of the meeting so we can, uh, in uh, good order for public process to continue moving uh, quickly, I will uh, resist my comments for another hour. <laughs> I will see them. Um, to our mayor of the last eight years. Oh, thank you. Oh, and, uh, my staff, uh, David, would you like to say that? Oh, yeah, thank you, um, Mayor Lech Um Well, we had a reception for Daphne and, and Mayor Norris uh, a couple of days ago. Here and I know that I and our staff had lots of opportunity to comment and say thanks to you and thank you and, and tribute to your service to our community. <clears throat> so I'm just going to mention tonight that um, I've only had about almost nine months to work with each of you. Um, so my point of reference is not one of, uh, I guess maybe in some ways more objective than others who've worked with you longer. Um, but my point of reference does come from having worked with, and I, I counted this up the other day, over 70 different city council members that I've worked with in my career as a city manager and seven different mayors uh, from three different states. And so when I take all that together, you know, Oregon City, the quality of our elected officials in general is higher than other places I've worked. And both of you, um, no matter how difficult the votes have been, what I, I have to echo what Commissioner, uh, what former city manager Patterson said at the tribute the other day, which was that every single time we do something here, Daphne, you and, and Alice, you uh, do it with class and dignity, and you represent the community with a sense of honor and respect that I've always appreciated. And I'm really hoping that that bar you set way up there uh, for all of us is something we can continue to strive for and be proud when you're not, not here and you're watching us like you will be. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but my door also is open not only to our current elected officials and all of our citizens, but to each of you. And I really hope that you'll stay in touch and let me know how you think we're doing from time to time. So, thank you. Anybody else want to make any comments? I, I will keep my remarks to the end as well. <laughs> Otherwise, I probably can't get to the meeting. You know, the end is the, it's not the end yet. <laughs> it's coming close, oh, no. though. Yeah. And the meeting won't be very long this evening, as far as we know, because um, um, as we look at the agenda, the first public hearing has been removed. So we will not have uh, a public hearing this evening. 
So that will shorten the agenda. Oh, we have the citizen comments. So. Yes. So next, we'll move into citizen comments. And the first is William Gifford, followed by Dan Holliday. And you have one minute in which to Please state your name in the city which you represent. Madam Mayor, I want you to say that one more night. Um, and submissions. My name is William Gifford. And uh, I would like to speak tonight with my hat on as the Secretary for the Citizen Involvement Council. I just had a couple of quick reports. Uh, one is that at our last meeting, we had our general election for officers for the upcoming two year terms. Um, Tom Guile was uh, re elected as chair for the next two years. Uh, the vice chair is Larry Hanlon, who is currently the co chair for the uh, Coffield Neighborhood Association, and he will be serving another two year term. And uh, yours truly was also elected for another two-year term as secretary for the CIC. Um, another, another, um, yes, uh, another um, a point of, point of note for the uh, for the CIC is that uh, we did have uh, our second reactivation meeting for the uh, Gaffney Lane Neighborhood Association. Um, unfortunately, the timing was the same night as the uh, case of Clackamas County. There was a horrible rainstorm. There was, the attendance was not as good as we'd like. We're going to have another one in March. But everyone that did attend uh, was appreciative of the newsletter that we put out to, to notify them of issues in their neighborhood, and we'll be doing that again. So we'll be looking forward to getting them going. And I suspect that the uh, that we will not be waiting until Gaffney Lane is in full gear before we start working with Tower Vista to get our last two neighborhood associations reactivated. And I would, I, and I'm expecting that uh, at some soon uh, city council meeting when the new commission is in, in uh, is, is all sworn in, that there will be a, uh, a state of the neighborhood association done by our chair. I don't know that he even knows it. I'm suggesting that he do that, but I think it would be appropriate for, uh, for our chair to uh, let you know what we've been doing. Thank you for time. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Questions? Dan. Good evening, Dan Holiday. I live in Oregon City. Um, I actually came to testify tonight on the uh, agenda item that was removed. Um, I, I watched the December 15th meeting on, uh, on cable. Uh, I think you'd be surprised at the number of people who do actually watch these meetings in, in part or in whole. Um, but I was, I was angered by a particular comment, and, and I wanted to address it, and, uh, and unfortunately, Commissioner Nancita isn't here tonight. Um, but when you're talking about this garage, um, and, it, and it's, a, it's a wider point than that, and that is, is that he said that the garage was too damn big. And I submit that it's none of your business, that uh, if we take a, a couple who is 52, kids are out of the house, they're very active outdoor people, they have a boat, they have an RV, they have a pair of canoes, they have a pair of jet skis, they have a pair of four-wheel drives, um, you know, they, they have all this stuff, and they, and they live here in Oregon City because they're an hour from the beach, an hour from the mountain, an hour from the desert. Excuse um, me, Dan, are you talking about my husband and myself? <laughs> the point is, is that, is that city code was developed originally, we go back into the 1800s, was to prevent, uh, you know, catastrophic accidents like the, 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 the molasses tower, uh, you know, collapse the back east and, and those kinds of things. And we are now running up into this area where we say we want to direct every piece of your life. And I believe that if somebody wants to have a one-bedroom house and a four-bedroom garage, because that's where they do most of their life, that that should be their right if they own that property. And so I would encourage you to think clearly about these things, that every property shouldn't be the same. It, you know, if you walk around historic, the historic McLaughlin district, and you have an overlay, and this, and this property wasn't inside that overlay. So, you know, I understand about, and, and I, I fully support keeping the historic flavor of the McLaughlin neighborhood. But once we get outside of that overlay, I think it's clear that we have to let people have some freedom to do the things that they wish with their property as long as they are building it safely. And that's what the reason for the code is there, is to maintain the public safety, whether we're talking about electrical code or plumbing code or building code or uh, you know, any of those things. So be very, very careful as you develop a new code 
to not restrict the freedom of these folks to do the kinds of things that they wish to do on their property as long as they aren't interfering with their neighbor. And I don't believe the size of that garage interfered at all with anything that their neighbors may have wanted to do or, you know, beyond the fact that they might not like how it looks. Well, sometimes you just got to say tough beans. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Okay, looking at the agenda, are uh, there uh, any mm-hmm. definitions and comments? Mm-hmm. For anyone who's been moved to speak, as uh, I see not. So we'll move on then. Looking at the agenda, is there anything anyone wishes reordered? Well, I have some pulled. And you want something pulled off the consent mm-hmm. agenda? Mm-hmm. Which is, which one? I'm sitting down there. Uh, it's the, must be the minutes of the government. Work session. There's only two minutes. One's um, the regular meeting and the one uh, It's the one that actually may, may have been the commission meeting. the meeting in which we uh, decided to not um, not go ahead with the Eastern Purchase. That was December 1st. December 1st. Okay, that's what I want to pull. Okay, we'll pull that off the consideration. Anything else? It's deep. Is that not right? I'll look it up in the meantime. Yeah. Okay. When we get to consent agenda, it shall be done. Okay. Now, moving back. Yeah. Um, first, we have the, the appeal which has been removed. So, do we need to have a motion to take that off of our. Uh, no, I don't believe so. The, as I understand it, the appellant withdrew their appeal. So, the. Uh, the, the yes, application has been approved. There's no need to do anything okay. further. Okay, thank you very much. Then we'll move on in our general business agenda. The first item is a look at the grant agreement for, which just jumped, the uh, grant, ag- grant agreement for Sport Craft Boat Ramp Replacement. And I assume this is Scott Archer, the services director. Mayor Norris, the commission. I don't get to say that very much longer, do no. I? <laughs> Uh, this is a uh, an agreement with Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. This is the second of two grants for the sport, sport craft boat replacement. Uh, we've talked about the, the project a number of times, so I know that you're familiar with that. Um, this approval would complete our funding package that we need. The reason that this one was delayed, as you note in your staff report, the the previous the first of the two grants uh, from Oregon State Marine Board in the same amount, roughly the same amount, was um, approved. Uh, over a year ago, it, it has to do with the, the delay in our in our permitting process, which I, I know that I've updated you on that a number of times as well. So that's that's why the, the gap in time. So uh, your approval tonight would, would complete the funding and put us on path to get this project done finally after uh, several years of, of working through our, our permits and our planning for this. And it's a very, very much needed project. Um, the uh, the hope is that we'll complete this in our summer in water work period this this coming summer 2011. So, with that, um, uh, my recommendation is for approval. Oh, and I do excuse me, I do need to let you know there's been a, a revision to what was originally put in your uh, packet, and you should have in your um, on your screens a revised a revised document. Revised uh, Yes, I'm sorry. Um, the uh, quick explanation there, it's, it's really just kind of a technicality thing. Nothing nothing substantially has changed. The funding and everything is the same. Um, there was a, uh, a page at the end of the original agreement that has some language that conflicted with some other portions of the document through uh, agreement with and uh, working with uh, Bill Kabeisman, our attorney, and then with working with the state. We, we removed, so what's the, the revision is that the, the last page of the original agreement was removed. That had some language that talked about not allowing contingencies in the budget, which is actually developed by the state. So their own contract was kind of contradicting itself. And then the uh, page nine, where it has the breakdown of the preliminary cost estimate, that uh, amount is the same, however, the way that it's broken out by line is different. It just simply removes some language about contingency. And if there are any technical questions about that uh, contract issue, I would uh, refer you to the supervisor, but it's really not a, not any kind of uh, substantial change. So. Right. Well, this has been a very tedious process, and I really appreciate, I think, particularly Denise Kai, who yes. has been shepherding it through this very much so. over your long process. Any questions from the Commission? 
Seeing none, then may I have a motion for approval? I'll move to uh, uh, approve and authorize the manager to enter into a cooperative grant agreement for the uh, funding towards the replacement of the sports grant boat grant project. Can I second? Second. Moved by Commissioner Neely, seconded by Commissioner West. Other comments or discussion? Seeing none, Nancy, the vote please. Commissioner Neely? Aye. Commissioner West? Hi, Mr. Smith. Hi, Mayor Norris. Hi, motion passes 4 0. Next, we have a contract to look at for the construction of the Oregon City Shopping Center Water Service Replacement. Nancy, that you, Ms. Fresh, our city engineer and public works director. Good evening, Mayor Norris and commissioners. Um, we have a fairly small contract in front of you that exceeds the $50,000 dollar limit that um, the city manager can um, approve on his own and this is to replace the water meter at the Oregon City Shopping Center as you can imagine to serve both its fire flow and drinking water needs it's a fairly large meter and we're replacing this outdated meter that is an inconvenient place to monitor and maintain with a compound meter that will serve the shopping center better it will measure the water more accurately and it'll be in a safer location. And um, I'm asking you to award the bid in the amount of $67,220 to Candy Excavating. Well, the lowest responsible yes. bidder. Great questions from commissioners. This one. You had the engineers uh, estimate. Did you make that estimate or your department makes that estimate? Is that right? This was actually done. Our, our, we had uh, a consultant do the design bid documents. We we'll do the design and prepare the bid documents for this <coughs> contract. And um, as part of their final design, they prepared the engineer's estimate. When it's done, is this estimate available to the people that are bidding? Yeah. So this is what I was what I found interesting is most of these bids were right around that. Yeah. Uh, in, some, in some cases, we do that. Um, in ODOT contracts, we give a range. Um, for this one, I don't believe it was provided. I see. Other questions? Seeing them, I have the I'll motion. I'll make a motion. Great. Um, I move to award the bid and authorize the city manager to execute the contract agreement with Candy Excavating Incorporated in the amount of $67,220 to provide construction services for the OC Shopping Center Water Service Replacement Project. So, moved by Commissioner West, seconded by Commissioner Smith. Mm -hmm. Further comments? Seeing them, Nancy, the vote, please. Aye. Aye. Motion passes for zero. Next, we have an ordinance to be introduced that we discussed in our work session. Our revision of our municipal code regarding business licenses. And who's going to do that? Um, I'll Scott? just uh, give you a, a quick summary. Again, you did review this last week at the work session. Um, this uh, code amendment is based on that, uh, the recommendations and, and the direction from the commission at that work session was to go forward with this. So um, we've already reviewed the details, and so I'll, I'll spare those with, um, with you tonight and unless you have any questions. But uh, essentially this code amendment puts into place those portions of the recommendation that need to be amend, uh, amended or addressed by the city code. And uh, so we're asking for your first reading of the ordinance tonight. Commissioner Smith. Um, was Doug having or? No, he was left hand. He's left hand. He's a left hand. Okay, so the um, recommendations that are not addressed by um, the municipal code are going to be um, are they going to come back for us or is that staff decisions that decide I mean, to go forward with? So there was some that I had concerns about and shared those concerns at the last meeting. So I don't know, are we going to have more discussion on some of those or is that going to be at the staff level? Well, uh, those, those were essentially what I would term procedural recommendations that are under the jurisdiction of the city manager to direct staff to go forward. So my assumption is other, unless I'm directed otherwise or other staff that are involved in that will, will proceed with that. Um, uh, well, I'm assuming though that the comments that were made on certain recommendations are going to be um, addressed. 
or are we just are we basically saying all those 24 recommendations are we're we're letting the staff go forward with? Yeah. I don't think that's what we were. were are you? Um, I'm sorry, David. Did you? I'm getting the sense there's some, some uh, confusion about the staff recommendations that are administrative. We're prepared to go ahead and proceed with those. Uh, and when we brought that report to the commission, we weren't um, bringing the report to you to request authorization or a decision on the administrative decisions. But what we wanted to do is ask if, if we do definitely need recommendations or actually we need you to pass this ordinance if you want to implement those changes. Many of the administrative decisions that we would be implementing and that was recommendations, we would not do if you didn't pass the ordinance because they, they, they are basically to implement your, other, your broader decision on the ordinance. So to make sure I'm not missing something, maybe you could refresh our memories about the, any of the comments that you made. Um, I have no problem approving this tonight because it, 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 um, it's only based on, on the recommendations that you spoke about just now. Um, but in terms of all the other recommendations, there were several recommendations that I made comments on. Um, and in fact, I believe there was some agreement on some uh, in terms of, um, I think, one of which was the um, extra fee for businesses within the home. Um, things like that. So there were some some of those recommendations that I kind of felt after the work session that we were maybe not so recommending after that discussion. And so I just want to know in terms of those, I'm assuming the notes were taken about those discussions and that will have some effect on the decision at the staff. That would be an example of an item that would take council or commission action. Okay. It wouldn't be administrative. So um, I think we did take notes of all of your comments, yeah. and we'll be bringing back some change, some further changes to it if if that's the direction you want to go. Also, also just to clarify a little bit further, I think um, that specific concern, Commissioner, plus the discussion about the um, uh, recommendation about the one-time application fee, there was some discussion. Right. What um, what we indicated at the, at the work session last week was that we are we've recommended deferral of some of those items. So I think, I think, and I'll have to review my notes in the, in the discussion, I think the majority of the concerns were addressed by the fact that we're probably not going to take action on a few of the recommendations for a delayed period of time. And I would think that at the time that we thought it might be appropriate to go forward, we probably would come back and report that. So I believe that's the majority of what they were, was those items that we were going to defer anyway. If, if I might continue, uh, what we will do is we will go back and refresh our recollection of what the notes were as well as the tape. We'll look in there over the next couple of days before we begin implementation, and we will report back to the entire commission in an email probably from me what we found and what we're doing to make sure we address each one. But I didn't see anything in those comments that would be inconsistent with our implementation. So, I think right, thank you. Okay, sir, really. Uh, I, I guess I assume that the, we're not hearing any testimony on this, and I was just wondering if uh, we don't have anybody coming in. Chamber, chamber of Commerce uh, saw this, and there was nothing coming from the chamber. Okay, because there are fee increases associated with this. You need to come to the microphone, Amber. <laughs> yes. We can't hear you otherwise. Why not? Holbeck, Oregon City Chamber of Commerce, and live just outside of the Oregon City City limits. Um, in regard to the chamber uh, re reviewing the proposed uh, business license changes, uh, both to ordinance as well as fees, those kinds of things. Um, the, our Government Econo Economic Affairs Committee has not um, met to review these specifically, and it's been, um, how do I explain this? The flow of information um, has not um, been such that we've been able to get that on our agenda. Is, is there a meeting that you have scheduled with Government Economic Affairs? We probably won't meet until January. When is your, is this the first? The first reading, yeah. First reading. So your second reading would be? 
I think it's going to be January 19th. I think we're not going to do it at the first meeting of the year. What I would love to do, uh, if this would um, be practical uh, within uh, from city staff, is to maybe have a city staff person join us at a January meeting to discuss um, these changes. And uh, I can work with David and we can um, set that up. We can we can open a public hearing for a second reading too. So. Absolutely, and that would be appreciated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, I appreciate it, Doug. Mm -hmm. uh, so my questions as well. Commissioner West, um, I have um, two questions. I missed the work session on this, so I'm sorry. You probably all covered it, and I didn't. On page seven of the one document, because I lost my thing here. Which one? Um, mm -hmm. On oh, the ordinance, the red line. The red line. Yes, that's. So it's when they talk about additional fees, which is letter D, and then number one was. So if I'm reading that right, so if you had a, an event downtown, say like Rocky has his Pioneer uh, Festival or Main Street has first city, our fair's going to cost $300 for a permit that day? I think that's always, it's always been there. in there. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's new. Oh, well, I, I just, I thought that was kind of high. It's only. Is, isn't it only for um, and if you have you know, multiple events in a year? Carnival, circuses, theater, yeah. musical production. Yeah. Yeah. What is the only thing that they're paying? Um, what's the mm -hmm. price for basically? Uh -huh. if, uh, to the extent that it recovers any of the city's costs, I think the, the gentleman sitting to your left would be able to remind you well, <laughs> how much the security costs for those events. <laughs> okay. Well, what? Okay. Uh, yeah. That's what we think too. Oh, yeah. well, I, I, you know, I never paid, never worked at that end of the yeah. thing. The thing. <laughs> Thanks. And then the other thing was when you chose your fees, um, I saw that there was an index that you used from a Portland film. So does that mean you looked at other cities with this size, same size, or it's just an index like a? Maybe well, somebody can explain that. We oh, uh, we did two things. We looked at. Uh, Surrounding cities, mostly I think mostly in the, in the Portland metropolitan area, and use that as a comparison as to how to establish our fees. But there is also a um, an automatic inflation index, that's the, the uh, CPI in in the ordinance that allows and so that staff doesn't have to revisit this with the commission every single year. Okay. Provides for some inflation adjustment. Thank you. That was it. That's all I had. I'd like to get back on top of um, Commissioner West's comments um, about the $300 fee. Um, I think that that allows staff an awful lot of dis discretion because it says circuses, carnivals, theatrical, musical productions, festivals, and other operations of, the li of like nature are subject to fee. So and is that the flexibility that you wanted, or did you mean um, events of over so many people or events that require City services or uh, for profit events or not for profit events. I, I'm just wondering, it, um, I, I always get nervous when of like nature. If you mean it to be suggested that that's a different kind of discussion. Oh, it's on page six, seven. seven, and it's letter D. Set, uh, number, uh, number one. Number one. So can I really get there? Okay, seven. Uh, Madam Mayor, I, might yeah. do it. I, I think this this is designed to give city staff some flexibility because somebody might say, well, this isn't a festival, it's a jamboree right. or a family right. gathering. Mm -hmm. and okay. we, it's the idea is that if you can have a whole bunch of people come together for an organized yeah. event, it, it implicates the city services. And so there's flexibility to capture whatever event that might be. Okay. I don't, um, uh, Bill, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I, this was not not new language. Right, no. So I, no. I guess that's what my confusion was, is I, right. I was thinking of something new that I was working on. No, no, it isn't new. Yeah, I mean, it, it hasn't been a problem then, but I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't no, some unintended. There's always a concern with this type of. You know, you've got personal and issues in terms of gathering and other things, so mm -hmm. it, there's always some some delicate thinking that has to go on with these types of things. So. Okay, that's great. Did you have further comment on that one? Okay, I think someone else is up. Uh, I have Mr. Fraser. Oh, down. Sorry, David is next. Sorry. 
So let me say, once again, on those festivals, I was thinking of things that were on the street that perhaps would have the streets closed off, or like um, Chief Conrad was saying, maybe police protection or garbage. So, so if you're the nonprofit, let's say, what is the one we just had? Uh, Phil Stocking, Phil Hart, that had an event at on a private property. Does that event have to pay a fee? No, I think these are all outside on the street. It is on the street, street or park. other places. Okay, thanks. The end. Other comments on that? Okay, then is there a motion for um, adoption of the first reading of the ordinance? Okay, then we'll move on to the next item. <laughs> well, we could actually. Oh, nobody has a paper copy. Of we could, you know, we could actually put it. We don't know in the future and not cutting down too much. We don't know on the page anyway. You know, we could actually hold off this first reading until the Chamber of Commerce has an opportunity to look at it. Is this time sensitive? <laughs> Link to the, link to the, the, the thing is, the, the business licenses for next year have already been. They've already been already. They're already out. Yeah. So they, it isn't really that yeah. sensitive. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Okay. I can tell you we're going to have some pretty heavy agendas coming up. Um, so, yeah. you know, to the extent you feel comfortable at least going to the second reading, we can put the brakes on after that if you'd like us to. Okay, I'll make a motion. Yeah. Commissioner West. Um, I will move for approval for the first reading for um, uh, for a, of an ordinance for introduction number 10-1014, amending Chapter 5.04 of the Oregon City Municipal Code related to business licenses. Second. Moved by Commissioner West. Second by Commissioner Smith. So further comments? First reading, go. Ordinance number 10-1014, an ordinance of the City of Oregon City, amending Chapter 5.04 of the Oregon City Municipal Code relating to business licenses. Thank you. Could you please read the whole Just read a little bit of it. Uh, 5.04.010, purpose of <laughs> manufacturing pursuit professions and trade to be carried on by and conducted in the city in a proper and peaceful manner. It is necessary to seem to be regulated and safeguarded. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for humoring me. Okay, um, so second reading next time, um, actually in two meetings, so that the Chamber of has an opportunity for comments. I appreciate that. Next, we have another introductory vote. <laughs> okay, for the vote. Details, <laughs> details, details. All right, I'll um, vote. No comment. Further comment? Discussion? Thank you. Yes, to the vote. Commissioner Neely. Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Mayor North? Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Next, another ordinance for introduction. This is a, another adjustment to our code, a chapter that will um, authorize exclusions from public buildings. And we again discussed this one at our work session as well, introduced by our police chief. So, Chief Conrad. Good evening, Madam Mayor and City Commissioners. Uh, we're recommending that the Commission approve the first reading of Ordinance 10 dash. 1013, which adopts a new chapter of the Oregon Municipal Code, which authorizes exclusions from uh, public buildings. And as Mayor mentioned, we talked about this in the work session on December 7th. The only addition to the draft you saw in that work session is we added two new offenses. One is harassment, and the other one is disorderly conduct, the type of um, offense that we committed in a public building in which people can be excluded. The rest is as we uh, discussed last week. Okay. Uh, questions about this? Any further comments? Yes. And motion, please, no. then, for no. this move. No. Commissioner Neely. Just, it, it appeared that every, every uh, exclusion thing that we had in there is actually covered by a state ordinance. It, it seemed to all be flagged, right? Yes. So these are, yeah, so there's no issues there at all. We're not creating any, any yeah. nuisance uh, definitions that don't exist in, in, the, in the state all code. All the uh, criminal statutes. Okay. So, make, bring this into line, it gives us extra protection. Um, may I have a motion for adoption, please? I move to approve the first reading of ordinance number 10 M13, adopting a new chapter. I'm reading the wrong one. Oh, no, I'm not. No, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> 
of the ordinance of the municipal code to authorize exclusions from public buildings. And a second? Second. Moved by Commissioner Smith, seconded by Commissioner West. For the comments? Yes, we hope, please. Oh, we had the first meeting, please. We're just a little distracted. <laughs> ordinance number 10 1013, ordinance of the City of Oregon City adopting a new chapter of the Oregon City Municipal Code to authorize exclusion from public buildings. Thank you. Now, the vote, please. Commissioner Mealy? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Mayor North? Aye. Motion passes 4 0. Now we've come to the consent agenda, and which point did we put it? Eight. Eight. Okay. So, may I have a, a motion for adoption of consent agenda? Okay. A. So moved. Second. Moved by Commissioner Smith, second by Commissioner West. On the consent agenda, the vote, please, Nancy. Commissioner Neely? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Smith? Aye. Mayor North? Aye. Aye. Motion passes for zero. Now we have under consideration the work session minutes from November 17th. I'm not, Commissioner Neely? I'm not able to pull up the document, but I know what I'm talking about anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, once in a while I raise these things. I probably should raise them one, one more time, you know, more often. But in this particular case, the minutes are so brief that you uh, miss the context of I'm just trying to figure out how to get into it. Uh, I'll, let, I'll, I'll read off your exact. Uh, the, uh, thank you. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's under uh, 2A, and we have here, and I'll read it. Marine Cole, library director, said due to findings of the due diligence inspection, she recommended discontinuing the purchase of Eastern School. She gave a history of the attempts at getting a new library for Oregon uh, City because uh, of the library district. There was a guaranteed funding source that would be approved, and so forth and so forth. She said, it says that due to new findings, nowhere are these fund findings summarized. I mean, the reason, the reason why we agreed to discontinue it was because of those findings that uh, were presented to us, and they're just, they're just not listed there. And I know, you, I know you're fond of saying, well, the minister really intended just to indicate what we said, but this is the reference point oftentimes, and I just don't, I just don't think this is anywhere near detailed. It doesn't indicate any basis on which we made our decision. Except that the other thing that, belong, that accompanies the minutes are the, all of the documents. And so the documents that um, staff and the staff report, so the documents she handed out um, had that detail. I, I understand that's the case. But the point is that these minutes here are indicate the basis that we made decisions and, and many public members would look at this and say well what was it based on anyway and I, I, I think these minutes are far too brief you might want to take that with the next city commission yes let's well, that's my, my complaint before it has not worked with this city commission <laughs> <laughs> I would always ask you to talk to me before when you find an issue like that, and I'll try to address it for you too. Because sometimes it really gets down to um, there's a legal, as you guys, you all know this, I know, but there's a legal minimum for minutes, which is simply who is there, what time did the meeting start, and how do they vote? The basis upon which the voting happened and all the rationale behind it. Um, it, it varies. Minutes literally vary from just that that I described mm -hmm. to an actual okay. verbatim transcript. Well, and everywhere in between, and, and when right. you think about a city clerk or a recorder, they're trying to aim somewhere in that middle of that continuum, and um, they don't always hit where you want them to hit. But um, I think just adding a word or two there that says based on higher costs that were projected kind of summarizes that to me, because uh, then they can cite the rest of the documents. If you think that would be sufficient, we'll just make that change and move well, on. I guess when I first came on the commission, I was a long time ago, the minutes were very detailed. And I think that... It wasn't the most detailed, didn't they? No, no, no. It's not on scroll paper. Um, yeah. so, but honestly, this graphic is technology that we're using, and we're all, some of us, being drugged into that, that age quicker than others, some kicking and screaming, and some just kind of writhing a bit. Um, but what's happened in cities, it's almost remarkable, they've gone more and more from verbatim minutes uh, because what we have now is a, an internal forever 
this dialogue right here that we're seeing is recorded for posterity. Yeah. And so when people can go back and actually see the voice and hear the voice inflection and see the faces and names of the people, as well as all the documents, we have even better than a verbatim record. We have a almost a, a, a virtual reality record of what occurred. And so when when cities have that much kind of that that kind of technology horsepower in their record keeping, many times they've gotten away from verbatim minutes. But I, I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to indicate that I'm asking for verbatim minutes. But when you, you make the statement that we're discont uh, we. we we decided to discontinue pursuing it. There should be at least some kind of statement, e even in these. I mean, uh, there was a reason for it. So it's a we had a couple of words in there that I think maybe a couple sentences. A couple sentences. How do we know they're the right ones? Okay. Well. Um. Let's see. Oh, we don't have any additions yet. So what we what we've done in previous meetings is to approve them pending review of the tapes. What I can do is review the recording and review exactly what the findings were, um, as long as it was presented at that meeting, because it has to be a record of that meeting. I'm pretty sure about and four items were okay. the group. They were the inability and without tremendous cost of taking the area that was thought to be dedicated to the library to give the sufficient forest space. And there was a situation that had an old boiler that was functioning, but the question is, how long would it be functioning? And uh, then there was references, but we, under, we knew that from before that because of the size and structure of the classrooms, they could not be opened up for for book purposes, but we knew that earlier. That was not really the basis. So I, I don't hear that many items. Well, if you wish, commissioners, we can adopt the pending review of the of the tape. Uh, um, well, or it's easier to. You know, it'd be hold it. be easier to hold it over. Uh, actually, it's easier to just go ahead and uh, approve them with the with the changes after following the review of the record. Then, and then it doesn't have to come back again for another vote. If we understand what the intent is, okay? Does everyone understand the intent? Okay. Then would you like to make a motion, please? Okay. Uh, I, I move we don't approve the minutes until we come back to as amended. Well, that's the need a motion. We'll just take that off the agenda then. Uh, is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Okay. So that brings us to the end of our business agenda. Next is our communications. Get a manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Mayor Elect, Elect Mealy and our Economic Development Director Dan Grimmel and I all went to the Oregon Business Plan Summit uh, on All Day Monday. It was an all day event, and we heard a lot of things there that were, I suppose, maybe more related to the conversation we had earlier at Urban Renewal about jobs, because that was the topic mostly of the summit. And, and it is viral. It was also a, a, a really good opportunity for networking with other uh, economic development professionals and also the governor-elect uh, Kitsabra's transition team. Most of them were there. Uh, we were able to meet a number of those folks as well. And the governor-elect spoke as well as the current governor spoke. And we were uh, then there were breakout sessions after that where we could get um, more intimate discussions with them, and, and it's just kind of fascinating to see the direction that Governor Kitsar, or Governor Elect Kitsar, intends to take the state. Education is going to be a major focus for him, and I won't go into all of my notes that I took, but there were some figures that were particularly germane to what's happening in Oregon City and some of the issues our commission is grappling with. Um, we talked a lot about the costs that the state state government is is. Uh, I might say in worse condition financially than certainly than Oregon City is. Um, statistics show that higher educated people are less often incarcerated. This isn't a surprise to any of us, and also they use less health care. So uh, the governor-elect is going to be focusing a lot on education and tr trying to find a way to, I think, move some dollars from expenses like incarceration that they believe are more reactive on the end and move those into uh, early education systems that will be maybe help people stop ending up in that place at the end of their uh, school careers. He also is going to be proposing some major changes in the way the state does budgeting, focusing more on outcome delivery rather than by department. 
Um, they talked about doing their regular uh, two-year budget, but then also doing a 10-year budget, which is going to be kind of interesting for, for those who have to estimate all the expenses. But nonetheless, that's where, where they seem to be headed. Also, um, there was mention of a regional economic development offices where staff, state staff that are now in Salem would then be setting up the, uh, these regional offices and that way they might be a little bit more accessible uh, to some of the cities that need help from the state and economic development. So I thought that was also worth mentioning. Um, and then some of the statistics that um, were revealed to us uh, were, were somewhat alarming about jobs in Oregon. Um, they're anticipating 194,000 Oregonians will be unemployed and looking for work this year. Only 30,000 job openings are projected for the next 12 months, uh, meaning that 6.3 workers are, are looking for work for every vacancy that will be available. These are their projections. Um, Oregon, though, added more jobs in October this year, they said, than at any time in the past five years. So that's a positive thing. Um, they're also rolling out a higher first strategy um, whereby they reimburse employers. If employers hire somebody that doesn't have the training and the skill set that they want and they send them to training after that, the state has got a new program where they will reimburse businesses after the training is completed. So they don't, that, that way they're encouraged to hire people even if they don't have the skills that they're willing to train for it and get reimbursed. Um, so the job, the job creation, I think, is really the challenge for Oregon. And they, they also mentioned the, the grim statistic that came out of the Portland Business Alliance last week about how Oregon is making per capita less for the same kinds of jobs as our neighbors to the north and probably many other places in the country. Um, we've got a lot going for us here in Oregon, but there's, the job creation is something that we're struggling with, and I think um, you know, our commission right here has got that on their agenda as well. So. Just wanted to share that, and um, then I think I had two other items. Um, I believe two of my department heads had items, but only one now. Maureen, you had something. Yeah, um, I just wanted to report in on something that I learned this last week about a, a grant that the county was awarded, and this is a grant that um, is a federal grant to construct a broadband and fiber backbone throughout the eastern part of Clackamas County. And do you guys know about this? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I, I reported on oh, it. you did already? Uh, well, no, some months ago, so go ahead. Well, it's just amazing because it's really going to provide us with a lot. And then what was added to the grant was um, some money for the libraries to be, I mean, door to door yeah. for us. And we won't have to pay anything to get it as long as we know where we're going to be. So my job is to get them very excited because apparently this is going to happen within the next 20 months. And so that's really great. I'm so, I didn't, it's not that I ignored you when you talked about it. It was just that it really hit home to me when I learned about the involvement with all the libraries and everything else. And, and it's just really getting started. They've got the project managers named and all that stuff now. So it's very exciting. I think David will be hearing from somebody very soon. So. Great. And then also I'd like to offer kudos to our public works director, Nancy Crusher, for the $206,000 grant from ODA and to some of our elected officials and other staff who probably worked on that or involved, Lord Purdy among them. So I really appreciate that effort. Um, I will be um, away on vacation too, um, like many of us, uh, from the 20th to the 27th, and Scott Archer will be filling in my destinate while I'm away. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Um, with my report, I have my final appointment. That is um, Chris Lugo to the Clackamas Cable Access Board. His uh, term will begin tomorrow and expire uh, at the end of next year, 2011. So I believe that fulfills the last un um, expired term before the year end. And so, um, Mary Lucky will be making the all the all of the other appointments up for the beginning of the year. So, Commissioner West, do you have comments you want to make? I do. Well, I'll make my um, work comments first. Or, or should I? Um, I don't know if you, uh, anyone, since I missed the last meeting or two, um, if anyone's reported on the new event we're going to have on January 15th on the, on the um, Oregon City Arch Bridge. Um, the event is called the Falls of Bridges Story. And it, uh, the event will commemorate the importance of the bridge between the communities and the work underway to create our national heritage area, which you've heard us talk at length about. 
So key players in the story of the falls, including the Grand Ronde storytellers and dancers, local artists who draw inspiration from the site, and roving presenters who uh, leading tales of pioneering days will be highlighting or will be the highlights of the event. So this is open to the public. The parking on either side of the bridge, and it's on Saturday, January 15th from 2 to 4. So I look forward to seeing you there. Um, I also wanted to wrap up. Darn it. That's the first day of the bridge closure, just to remind everybody. Oh, I, I'll, I'll do it without my notes. Um, I wanted to wrap up C4 for the year. Um, boy, talk about staffing and um, financial problems and everybody's budget. The December meeting of C4 was canceled because of staffing issues from the county. At least that's what they said. But so the last meeting I went to was in November, and I um, have spoken at length through the year of how C4 was originally formed as a group to uh, inspire collaboration and, among cities and to, for us to work on issues that we all have in common, uh, mainly transportation and land use issues. So, but as time has gone on and the county has created hamlets and villages and community planning organizations, some of those people were feeling left out. So they have, um, and wanted to be part of the group, and they have been added to the group. Well, since adding them to the group, um, let me also back up a little. The meeting is always at C4, always on time. It ends on time, two hours. But now our group has increased from maybe about 10, 20 people to 40 or 50. So even closing comments in a group of that size, when we say a one-minute roundtable from the can take almost an hour. So the meetings have become out of hand and we're not getting as much accomplished um, that's of relevance to everyone in the room and so a lot of the cities have been dropping out. So at a retreat we discussed how is this group going to reinvent itself? Do we want to disband? Do we want to just reform all over and be for cities? Do we want to um, work in subgroups or um, you know, how, do, how should we proceed? So that night we had uh, finished up a discussion and took a vote. In 7-6 it was passed that how we're going to choose to work in uh, 2011 and on is that there will be a quarterly, excuse me, quarterly meeting with the large group where everyone's in attendance and then the next two meetings of the uh, quarter will be a breakout. So if you're a hamlet or a village, you'll go to those type um, you know, meetings where you have issues to share in common with them and cities would um, work together in their own. So um, that's where that got left off. And uh, I shared with the group that I would be back and that uh, Mayor Neely would make the appointment for who would be there next year. So, uh, and to wish them a warm welcome, whoever it is. So I think that's it for my work committees. Oh, oh no. Okay. Finish your reports and then we'll get into this. Um, I don't have a report, um, but I do want to uh, make some comments, and I do want to um, say a few words to uh, my colleagues as well before they leave. Um, are you going to be here at the next meeting, though, right? Don't they hand it over? I don't know. I remember it just turned it over. Right? It's just brief. She doesn't really do much. <laughs> I don't remember what I remembered it last year. I'm not sure. Two years ago, we thought. But it's, a, it's actually a wonderful symbol of unbroken yeah. democracy. Yeah. We've got a never out of hand of a man. Um, so I want to, you know, this is, this is um, until you um, make the decision to run for um, city office and sit here. Um, you can't really even explain to people what it's like and, and um, the amount of work and um, stress, and, um, but we all do it for a good reason and, and we all have a vision of what we, we see this city can be. And so, not always the same, but we're always working for the same thing. And um, I really appreciate working with uh, Daphne. Um, and I think that the amount of work that she put in, um, you know, when you go down on Main Street um, and really, um, you know, for somebody that's lived in Oregon City their whole life, um, I remember riding across the bridge to pick my grandpa, grandfather up from work with my grandmother, and I remember what downtown Oregon City looked like then. Um, and growing up through school, uh, high school, and I don't remember ever spending as much time in downtown Oregon City as I do now. 
And in fact, I make an effort to do it. Um, I went to Subway. Uh, I found out it was closing on the day it closed, so I went down there and had a sandwich. Um, I, um, you know, so it takes a lot of work. And Daphne has been um, a really strong advocate for Main Street, and I think um, that the work that she's done with that group has just really made a huge difference. Um, and so I hope to stay involved in that because I really, um, you, you can see what's happening downtown, and we, we can't lose that. Um, Daphne, you're always um, really positive um, and cheerful. And, you know, when I walk into my classroom at my work, you know, there's always certain students that stand out. Um, and just kind of are like, okay, they're always going to be cheerful. I've never been that kind of person. I have my moments that go up and down, and, and um, but I've always been intrigued by people that are always cheerful and always seem to be positive. And, and you, um, I definitely think, fit that um, description. It's, it's always, you always have a smile when, when everyone comes in and is working, and so I, I appreciate that. Um, Alice, um, I've worked with Alice a long time, and um, people don't realize that we um, agree on a lot. We both love Oregon City more than we can probably even comprehend speaking in words. Um, we are both extremely passionate about schools and art and history. Um, and it's one thing that I've kind of, our paths have crossed um, numerous, numerous times um, since I was a kid, um, working at the Interpretive Center, worked with Alice on, um, on the um, first art commission, um, I worked with Alice on the bond to build a new high school. Um, so it's, it's been a lot, and, and so um, it's been a real joy to work with her. Um, I think she does bring um, some class to Oregon City, and um, which is, you know, Oregon City hasn't always been known for that. Um, and I, I just think in, in the long team of Oregon City, I was mentioning this today at school, um, Oregon City High School is not the same Oregon City High School that it ever was. It's a new, it's a new place, and uh, Oregon City is not the same place. Um, it's a new, it's a new city, and um, you know it has some of the old, um, you know, history and um, things that make Oregon City great that kind of has stayed with it. But it has involved evolved into a place that. Um, I truly never imagined seeing, um, and um, you know, so much so that now Westland's kind of like, wait a minute, what's happening on the other side of the river? Um, that was a pretty amazing thing, and I think Alice had a lot to do with that. Um, I also um, also um, working with both Daphne and Alice on the uh, South Fork Water Board has been. Um, helpful, and I'm scared um, <laughs> that they're both leaving because now I'm going to be um, <laughs> the um, <laughs> senior <laughs> <laughs> Oregon City, and, and that worries me because it, it, it is not, um, it has been kind of the, the biggest learning curve for me. Um, I felt that in most aspects of my life in Oregon City, I've been connected to most everything that I've had to deal with up here, but, but not water. Um, and so that's been um, um, a tough one for me. Um, so um, let's see if I can mention everything I wanted to mention. Um, so thank you. Uh, to thank you for, for the amount of time and work that you, you put in. And um, I look forward to next year um, when Oregon City High School will beat Westland in football for the first time in eight years. <laughs> I don't know if it was a curse or what happened, but um, the entire time, 
you served as mayor, we lost. And, and I'm hoping that changes. I think it has more to do with our team than you. But thank you so much. And I hope that you stay. And I, I can't, well, this is the last thing I was going to say. I, I hope that you stay just as involved in our cities you have. I, I just in the lifetime that I've been involved in Oregon City, I can't imagine um, an Oregon City without some involvement from you. I know. So um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, I'm thinking that my association with both of you actually goes directly and indirectly to the Old Home Forum. Old Home Forum is a group of uh, people. It's almost defunct now, although occasionally there's a meeting to keep us alive, barely. It was a, a, a group of people that uh, owned old homes in Oregon City. It was a kind of a support group. We learned various ways of, uh, of, of uh, contractors and so forth that worked specifically on old homes. And uh, Daphne West was in that group, and I was in that group. And when I first moved to Oregon City, I, 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 refer, I refer to myself as being a newcomer, but it's going on 22 years ago. That doesn't sound quite right, but that's the way it was. But it was, a, it was an organization. Uh, I believe the first person I met uh, was uh, was actually Claire Met, and, and uh, when I came in and got me involved in the old home forum. Uh, later saw Daphne West there and so forth. And I think it was a building block, really, to... The local neighborhood associations, as the neighborhood associations came into being, I think it's one of the reasons that the McLaughlin Neighborhood Association is such a strong group because it has that binding historical history that holds people together, no matter how recent they are in the neighborhood. It was very easy to become involved in this community, and uh, so I was able to work with uh, Daphne once there. And the first time I remember seeing Alice Norris was at my house when we were on, uh, I think, the Old Home Forum tour. Uh, I'd never done anything like that, and our house is actually, although it looks very tall, it's, it's limited in square feet, and and uh, hundreds of people came through the, that tour at that time. And when I was getting about 20 people on the staircase there, I started panicking. And, uh, uh, I didn't know what was going to happen. But, uh, and then, of course, I've seen Alice at many other uh, occasions. Now, I had somebody telling me it was so wonderful having such a fine lady as the mayor. But one of my other memories was not quite as a fine lady as you might imagine. It was at a fundraiser for the, uh, uh, for the what was the, uh, uh, well, I, no, this is a fundraiser for the, the uh, Oregon Trail, uh, for, the, uh, for the foundation, as I recall. And this case was held there at, it was held there, I think, at, uh, at, the, at one of the things. But there was a fundraiser and there was an auction. And what was auctioned out? There was a pair of old bloomers. Oh, no, she put them on. She put them on. She put them on. She She put them on. She She put them on. 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 She put you know, it's, 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 that, that's funny too because um, what, a lesson for you, by the way, in the future is don't parade in your red bloomers when there's a newspaper photographer sitting right there. Yeah. It was in the newspaper too the next day. So I think those red bloomers do resurface. I mean, they have. It's a great privilege. Of course, I'll continue to know you, but knowing you for the almost the whole time I've been here, to one level or another in Oregon City, but to work with you on this commission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I remember my first first meeting, thinking, "Oh my God, I have four years." My very first meeting, we had a public hearing. I had no idea how to use the microphones, or uh, in those days, we had to juggle. Uh, the mayor did all the timing, and you had to juggle the microphone and the papers and all the cards of the people that were speaking. Hi, honey. 
<laughs> in all of my eight, in all of my 416 meetings, I've never seen my husband in the back of the room. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's so sweet. Excuse me, I'll talk like. Um, then I forgot what I was saying. My, well, yeah, my first, my first meeting, I thought, I don't know if I can, I can really handle this because I never have a schedule of public hearing for someone's first meeting that's never been on the city commission before. It was really awful and very, very hard. So I, uh, we have moved so far from then. Um, when at our first meeting, I mentioned at the, at the reception, we were all given fax machines. And so we all got to have a city fax machine we kept at home, and that's how we communicated in those days. And here we are paperless. I just think it's amazing. And a huge credit to staff for organizing us and pulling everything together. I have to mayor for 16 more days. Please, no floods. We have to keep public works working really well, so we don't have to worry about ice storms or anything. Tornadoes, yeah. This, uh, I, I keep thinking, oh, please, let's just be lucky. This is actually meeting number 416 of official chartered meetings. And that doesn't include all the other things that, that a, the, a mayor in particular does, but each of you carry your, your burden. So I decided to put that, all those hours in an eight-hour day, and that means that I have spent one year sitting in meetings. But that, that's a seven-day week. And I've only missed one in eight years. Um, our biggest meeting was 215 for the Walmart hearings. The longest one went till 8, I think we had two that went to 11.45. But we never got to tomorrow. Um, we spent two years on the comp plan. We never really haven't talked about that. That really set the standard for the work here in Oregon City uh, over a two-year process. We spent two years on the Park Place concept plan. We spent two years on the Eurofeed concept plan. And we took two years to annex to the fire district, about two and a half, actually. So good solutions take a long time in coming. And it's part, I think, of the work that we've done together in that that's brought us together in an amazing way, I think, in the community. So it's, it's been a, an honor to be chosen to leave for a short time. And it's, I made incredible friends. I made amazing discoveries. I thought I knew Oregon City very well. I've lived here a long time. And I, I call them the hidden treasures of Oregon City. It might be someone that I didn't know that you know, it was a world famous architect that actually lives in Oregon City, but always has worked elsewhere, but lives right here. Or some wonderful little piece of art that's hidden around a corner in a neighborhood. It's just been amazing to do that. I have been incredibly well supported, and I thank all of you in the room and, and the citizens out there for that support. I have never felt so supported in this very, very difficult job. Um, I am so proud of the team that we've built. Without the team, nothing gets happened. Nothing happens. And the quality of the team is important for the quality of the work ahead. Of all the pledges that I made when I first campaigned for office in 2002, probably only one that's unfulfilled, and that is, we don't have a new library. I'm so sorry about that. But I think that's pretty amazing that for the hopes and dreams we all had together in 2002, um, that we really fulfilled them all. And I'm, besides the financial health and economic revitalization, I am most proud, and I've said this over and over again, but at the big, I, I believe that we really contributed to community pride. This is a community that had a strong, uh, uh, what's it inferiority complex. And um, they didn't really think it was highly valued. And I think the fact that the new high school really raised that self-esteem and I, I told the story before, but I love the story because I think it is so encapsulating the work. Um, the woman who lives in another works in another school district, so she said, I used to come home to Oregon City with my eyes tightly closed. And she said, Now I come home, my eyes are open, and I sing. To me, that's my eight years worth of salary. It's to, to, to hear members of our community being proud to live here and not having to apologize for that any, anymore. So. I'm, I'm very, very, very proud to have worked with you on that. Staff. We are understaffed in almost every department. And so I know how incredibly hard each of you work. You are the hands, the eyes, the, uh, the diggers of the community. You make it work for us. And my admiration and respect for you has grown as I've gotten to know, to know each of you. 
Um, I, I know we've bonded through adversity, we've bonded through our successes, and we've bonded because we all had some of the same vision for the future. And um, I, I, I adore each of you. I wouldn't trade any of you to give me a million dollars to any other city, so don't you leave. Um, living with Daphne has been just incredible. As, as Rocky r rightly said, what a positive influence that you have been. Um, she has also been, I think, the consummate legislator in that she never surprised staff at a meeting. She would always go to staff ahead of time or give city manager a heads up about something that was coming. And that's a really important thing that, that staff, we all need to look smart. And so for staff to be prepared, it's nice to have it. And the staff always ask great questions. She used to come with her list of 20 questions on, the, on each issue. And I, I always appreciated that because they were always thoughtful. Um, again, Main Street has really been where your home is, but you've been so visible in the community, and I think that's also, and some of us can't, who sit here on these chairs, um, the nine people that I've served with, not everyone has been able to be visible in the community, but when you are, we learn what, ha what happens. Um, we, we, we are accessible to people that we might not otherwise be, because I'm the mayor of the people who didn't vote for me, and I'm also the mayor of the people who do not vote, or who are not registered to vote. And so I take that responsibility very seriously. I don't hang up on someone because they're not registered to vote. And I also, um, I think it's wonderful that around the table here, we sit in a nonpartisan way. We have a problem, and we work together to create a solution. I think is a real privilege, having just run for a partisan office. Um, Rocky and Jim, Jim's not here tonight, but this is going to be your time. You've sort of been shielded by the three votes that we had, um, and now it's going to be your time to step up to the plate um, to demonstrate um, your leadership. You know, we, we, we've known what you're against, and now it's time for you to show what you're for and to truly lead us into the future. We all need to see of the vision because it's vision and where you can take us that will make us excited and help us to accomplish um, what we need what we need to do. I wish you success and continued for, forward progress. I wish you positive results and, uh, and, and value your staff. The staff is the most important, again, um, tools that we, that we have in the community. David, it's so wonderful to have you with your new ideas and new ways of working and another voice in the community. So I wish you well, wish you well and great success in, in building the new team because that's what you guys are going to be doing as new commissioners is that the, the better the team, the better you work together, the more consensus that you can find, the stronger you can move ahead. Lack of respect, lack of trust takes longer to accomplish your goals and also is very expensive. We've had a little bit of that over the last two years. We've slowed our work and it's also gotten very expensive. We have to do more things when we don't trust each other. So work on that. I think it's very, very important. Doug, it's, it has been a pleasure. You are so well prepared to be mayor. And I have no doubts at all that, that you, um, you're the right person for this office. Uh, you, 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 have, uh, you know how to listen. You know how to, to um, you want to legislate and you know the issues in the community, you're so intimately involved with them. So I wish you um, the, the best. And one thing the mayor, I believe, has to do is be the keeper of the vision. Um, we can all get mired in details, but the mayor sort of has to think about, you know, where are we trying to go? And, uh, and so I, I give you my vision. You can keep it. But I think it's very, very important. And remember, nothing is so bad that it can't get worse. But you will find such support and people will work incredibly hard hard for you and with you, but most of all have fun. It, it, is, it, is a, it is a lot of fun, and the greatest reward, of course, is looking around and seeing that people um, enjoy their community and believe that it is getting better working together. And to the community, again, the positive support that I have felt has just been amazing. Um, to all of you for stepping up to help your city, 
for emails, cards, and letters that I get all the time. The mayor gets like four times as much mail as everybody else, maybe even ten times as, as much mail. Um, I have stacks and stacks of, of things. Sometimes it's um, complaints and concerns and issues, and now and then you get some good news. Um, but this is a great community. I love this job. Um, it, it seems like it's been a long time, but now looking back, it, of course, has gone by in the, in, the, in the blink of an eye. But it's been my privilege to serve with you, and uh, I'm going to miss it. But I'm going to be, as I look around my community, so proud of the work that we've done together. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I forgot something. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to will something to the next mirror, so. One of the things that Claire, Claire Matt found this at a sale, I believe it's over ten cents. Oh my goodness! And one of the, you know, the one of the projects that I had was cleaning or cleaning. Uh, uh, we did we did the inside of the elevator, and um, so when Claire found this, I started funds for the renovation of the outside of the elevator. So Claire. This is actually a bank, and uh, I, I give you a head start on your fundraising for uh, this project. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you all. Uh, if there's no further business to come before us, I have one, one comment. Yes. Um, <laughs> 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 oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, exciting night tonight. And uh, Alice is so right. It's uh, These meetings get a little long, and oh, you think, how are you going to get through it? And bingo, four and a half years are gone. So um, thank you all for um, allowing me to indulge a little uh, time and, and talk tonight. And the first... Um, what about, the first retreat we had as a city councilor, the question was, why did you run for city commission? And uh, and I had said my little plain story was, we've got to get this uh, city out of crisis management. Uh, I, you probably heard it over and over, but you're going to hear it one more time. When Alice took over as mayor in 2002, three, three. the city was on the verge of bankruptcy. And um, we had a the uh, least library hours open, or we had to cut everything. We just, so the library was open the least for the largest service district and the largest circulation. And we lost our neighborhood coordinator. We were really in tough shape. And um, I had happened to, uh, what did I do? I served on the Blue Ribbon um, Committee Task Force. And then uh, Alice gave me um, Oh, she an opportunity to work on a, the first time for uh, a bond or a, not a bond, a um, help me here. Okay, fire fire annexation. Yeah, fire annexation to, to pass on joining the fire district. So that's what, how I started on uh, Oregon City. Don't do this either. You, we had built a fire station, but didn't uh, figure out how to fund the firemen and keep the fire station open. And uh, it was at a point in our history where Clackamas Fire was feeling. Um, a little bit, a little bit resentful of giving service to Oregon City at a lesser rate than it was charging the rest of the district. So we worked on that, or I worked on that two uh, different times to get that passed, and then, and then we did finally, you know, as, as you were saying, two and a half years later, and uh, put the city on the right financial track, and it also, you know, secured um, a better fire engines for Oregon City, more hours of a. Uh, fire, um, oh, the fire station was open and more, you know, firemen on duty. So it was a good thing. So uh, talking a little bit about things I'm most proud of. So uh, that really just started the right course for the city. And uh, although we had a, a failure then, and we, we haven't talked much about our failures uh, in four years, and that was when we, this was before the second time we ran that levy and it passed, uh, we thought we would go for an operating levy on the library. Because you know, we have avid library supporters in this community, and it was 
was heartbreaking to see um, how little hours we had. And you know what? It didn't pass. And if I remember right, maybe Doug and Alice can help uh, fill in the details. We were not in consensus as a commission. Maybe overtly we did the 5 0, but we weren't. And, uh, and the gossip around town, the rumor, around, no, it's stupid. We don't need to do this. And uh, it didn't pass because it really, to have things go forward in a community, it really takes a, a team effort and a lot of collaborative effort. Um, and so it didn't pass. And then um, a couple years later, we had a chance, or Clackamas County was struggling with how to fund their libraries because there's city libraries and county libraries. And the county provides the, I don't know what the link is the at, um, acronym for, but they provide all the internet. Um, services for the library. So and they decided maybe they would form a special service district um, to fund libraries on a long term basis. And, you know, in Oregon City, we had a choice of whether to buy into this strategy or not because here we, it was another tax site for um, our, our residents, but really it did not provide for uh, building a new library. And here we still we had an inadequate library uh, at Danielson. So but uh, in spite of that, I supported it, and we all supported it, and lo and behold, that passed. It said a lot about Clackamas County and, and our um, Oregon City that we really valued uh, education and libraries. It was a great thing. So really proud to have been part of long-term funding for libraries. That's really a really wonderful thing. Um, the other thing I'd like... Um, of Rocky and everyone has alluded to, this Main Street program has been so much fun to work on and uh, we have a great board of directors, it's all a very positive thing and it's been so much fun, we've really made some headway on it in the last couple of years and I have to give a lot of the credit to Lloyd Purdy. Um, I'm still waiting for Lloyd Purdy to get himself in a little mischief with that red hair, but he managed to you know, like, he, he managed to put out the press releases and get all the positive attention. But you know, someday. So, no, so we've had a great time, great success. And um, then I want to thank, uh, take the time to thank all of our staff. I, and I, I go through everyone. You'll sit for a, a while here more, but. It's been so wonderful to work with such a professional staff. I've learned so much, and I, I just really enjoyed it. And um, I've got to work with two police chiefs, and um, I, I like Gordon Fraser. I like Mike Conrad. I'm so proud of Mike. I love his uh, four tens and uh, the solution on staffing with eight police officers on a uh, uh, shift. It's just so fabulous. And it's been fun to hire seven police officers. He's probably not the department that gets to say he's the least understaffed in comparison to the others now. So that, that was good. And um, of course, our uh, engineer, uh, Nancy Kreshauer, is valued all throughout the region as the most, one of the most creative uh, public work en engineers. And you can see by some of our art projects with our uh, stormwater management that um, it, it shows. And Maureen has been a fun addition. Um, she's had to make two. Well, we all complained when we were at Danielson's, and here we're in another, what, a third of the size of Danielson's. And, uh, but it's a beautiful facility to Carnegie, and that's all, that part's all fun. And, but um, she's making um, the same amount of circulation with that little library. So, well, pretty close. That's, that's well, it's funny, it is inadequate, but it is a nice place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fun. I do have to have um, uh, a couple of special accolades. Uh, um, and for David Frazier, um, it was really fun working with Larry all those years. And uh, Larry, it was time to go, and so we hired David. And um, he was kind of embroiled in a little bit of conflict here. Elections changed, and... There was enough angst and um, um, frustration and blame uh, being cast around these last few years that it's the Oregonian and the Oregon City news and business. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. 
So, um, but there's one person that I know for sure will never take any of the blame for anything, and that is David Fraser because he wasn't here. Yeah. And you get to start with a clean slate, and I'm very happy for you. I'm happy for the community, and I hope it's been a healing. Uh, hopefully, it's healing for the commission. It's healing for the community to start all over and and reassess the direction you're going. Um, but I do have to say something to a, uh, one special staff person, and that is, uh, I was gonna, I'm not going to get sappy, it's to Nancy I. Because um, <laughs> this job, after four years, does not even feel like the same job that when we started because of your organizational efforts. It is, she has just cleaned Oregon City up from the inside. <laughs> and uh, the, starting from the, uh, what do you call the uh, storage things, the uh, dumps, or not dumps, what do they call them? <laughs> the containers with all our records. But, uh, so, Nancy Ida is our own, Vicki Norris, if you ever heard of her in Portland here, restoring order and reclaiming your life. Not Alice Norris, Vicki Norris. Norris. <laughs> and uh, it's really organized. It's not, I would say, the inside, but also from the outside. So, you know, as we go through campaigns and we hear um, allegations of uh, insider dealings and uh, not tr non transparency, I, I just don't get it because. Four years ago, there was no information available to the public. Now, everything, everything we do, if we see, we hook up, it's a, well, it's on those tapes, isn't it, Doug? <laughs> yeah. The only abbreviated it is. Yeah. But it, it, everything is just amazing what technology has done for um, transparency and government. And also thanks to David Knoll. We have a very creative IT uh, department, and Nancy and David worked so hard to update us with our website. But all the things you can do online, it's really amazing. And I, too, would like to uh, thank my colleagues, and I wish Doug the best um, in the future. I, I know one thing that don't ever believe an article in the paper if they say Doug didn't give you a fair shake. It will not be true. It could not be true because there has been no one that is more uh, patient and listening and giving anybody a chance than Doug Neely. Well, I will tell you, and I'll admit it right now, what, we had breakout sessions at this meeting we went to um, on the business situation and climate. I went to the budget breakout as one of them. I fell asleep. <laughs> 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 and it does have a team, so that'll be okay. That'll be okay. <laughs> So, I, I wish you the best, Doug. Um, you're the right person for the job. You've got the skills. You've got the depth of the experience. You're going to do great. And, uh, Rocky, I wish you the best, too. And, uh, like as Alice was saying, it'll be your time. Um, I won't be taking those uh, hits for you anymore, Rocky. So, we're going to have to decide. Uh, I mean, so been making hits on Rocky. You've been taking them? <laughs> Something like that. Um, so, um, oh, and then, of course, it's been my privilege to work with Alice. I've been following in Alice's footsteps here behind her, about 50 steps, not one or two, about 50 for many years. And what a wonderful uh, role model for public service Alice has been. And as Larry with Patterson would have said, it's really fun to work with the best and the brightest. And wait, 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 I didn't say perfect. And um, we're going to save some of that, though, for um, your party. I'll be nice. I won't be like Dutch and Sheer Many of you don't know that uh, working with the mayor is a former English teacher that, you know, um, you're going to have the unabridged red line versions r available at the party for you. And... Um, it's been English 101 working with Alice on City Council. So I hope as I finish my course, did I pass my English 101? Yes, I believe you did. Uh, that's good news. Larry Patterson didn't, though. Larry did. The teacher on the verbal. I'm so hard for that. Um, 
So, um, and the last thing I want to do is thank the community uh, for trusting in our leadership the, and believing in our um, decision making the last four years because believe me, it has cost. And Oregon City, all you guys, and uh, like the, what, is there almost 31,000 people now? That, so the 30,000 that I don't know that you see at the grocery store walking in your neighborhood. Thank you for your support because you have, are the ones that really have stepped up to the plate. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't. It wasn't cheap to join uh, or to annex to the fire department. It wasn't cheap to have long-term library service, and we've um, um, secured a lot of public safety issues with our in um, our, our sewer, water, and street funds. And um, it, it's cost this community. So thank you very much for believing in us and investing in um, this wonderful place. And uh, so, anyway, I think I'm just about done, and I wish everyone the best the next few years. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now. The Oregon Recorder of the Year. Well, I guess following that, um, it's a team effort, and we all know it. And each one of you have um, been a really great member of this big team we have here called Oregon City. And I just wanted to say a special thank you. And I, I'm not a woman of many words, but um, I just wanted to know what this. I want you to know that it's been a real pleasure, just an utmost pleasure, to to work with you and for you. Um, when you work as closely with people as we do, we um, you get to know each other in lots of different ways. And so um, I'm not going to make a lot of long statements, but I am going to say just a few words about you. And they both they both meet both of you. There've been words popping around all over the place lately, and so I thought it was the right thing to do. Anyway, the, this is what I think about you both, and this is truly. But I think honest, dedicated, funny, confident, faithful, and my favorite, gracious. You both have been so gracious in, in all that you've done in to, for this community, for me personally, for the for staff. And I, I just wanted to tell you, you know, I really, really appreciate it. I'm sure we all do. So thank you. And I know there are more words. And if Doug would turn around and go look right behind him, there are some words for you um, on a couple of um, photos there that uh, at the open house last week, we had um, lots of different people sign. And there's one there for each of you. If you could hold that up so the cameras can see. There's one for, I believe that's the one for, for you, Alice, and the other is for Daphne. That's a gift from the citizens and um, the city of Oregon City. Oh, this will be a wonderful memory to have. I hope yeah. you know. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. So those are even more words for you. Yeah, great. Yeah. Okay, shall we end this terminable meeting? Yes. All right. On behalf of the citizens of Oregon City, um, it's been a pleasure to serve, and uh, we are adjourned.